J'ai l'honneur. I have the honor, on behalf of the government of the French Republic, to submit to the National Assembly the abolition of capital punishment in France. It's a question that should never be put to a referendum because we talk with passion and justice is there to depassionate the debate. Fighting to end the death penalty is fighting for life, and I still believe in it. Hello and welcome to France in Focus. It's now 40 years since France's then socialist government made good on one of its campaign promises and abolished capital punishment. The last person to be sentenced to death had been guillotined in Marseille four years before President Mitterrand's justice minister, Robert Badinter, presented a bill here at the National Assembly calling for the death penalty to be scrapped after nearly two centuries of debate. His words ring out 40 years on as he tells French lawmakers that, quote, there are no men on earth about whom one should totally despair. In September 1981, Robert Badinter made a formal plea for an end to the death penalty, stating that justice is human and thus fallible. I have the honor, on behalf of the government of the French Republic, to submit to the National Assembly the abolition of capital punishment in France. When François Mitterrand became president, the death penalty was still in place, even in its most terrifying form, the guillotine, a vestige of the French Revolution. On November 28, 1972, Claude Buffet and Roger Bontemps were executed in the early hours of the morning in Paris, having been found guilty of murder and hostage-taking. Yet one of them was only found guilty as an accomplice to murder. His lawyer was Robert Badinter. I swore to myself, having seen Bontemps executed, that is, seen a living man sliced in half, that my abolitionist attitude would become militant activism. In his role as lawyer and activist, Badinter would ensure that murderer Patrick Henry escaped the guillotine in 1977, even though the majority of French people were in favour of the death penalty. At the time, France was the last country in Europe, with the exception of Belarus, to uphold capital punishment, and there was little public appetite for abolition, even among those committing the crimes. In the crowd around the courthouse, as Buffet and Bontemps were passing through, people were screaming, death to Bontemps, death to Bontemps. And in that crowd was a young man named Patrick Henry. But for Badinter and an as yet unelected François Mitterrand, the republic should be built on values, not opinion polls. Je suis contre la peine de mort. I am against the death penalty, and I don't need to read the opinion polls, which say otherwise. Once elected president, Mitterrand named Badinter justice minister. Abolition of the death penalty became a priority for the new socialist government, but was met with strong resistance in some quarters. In any case, crimes have increased even without the death penalty because it hasn't really existed for the last four years. However, in certain cases, the prospect of the death penalty was very real. So when it's totally abolished, well, that's when the murderers are going to be really delighted. There will be no limit to it. The abolition of the death penalty was adopted by the French Parliament on September 30, 1981. Once hated by a large chunk of the population for his stance, Robert Badinter is now among the most respected figures in the country. In my lifetime, I was able to see this cause prevail. Fighting to end the death penalty is a fight for life, and I still believe in it. So I've been very lucky. Four decades on and at 93 years old, that battle's not over. Badinter is still fighting for the universal abolition of the death penalty, which is still applied in 55 countries. 
Compared to some of its neighbours, France was relatively late in scrapping the punishment and packing away its blade for good. The death penalty is, though, still an option for courts in the US. We're going to meet a French woman who's married to Hank Skinner, a man on death row in Texas. For years, she's been campaigning for him and for others just like him. Sandrine and George Skinner, thank you very much for talking to France 24. What was the very first trigger that got you involved in this activism to try and get rid of the death penalty? Uh, it was an execution in France. Uh, I was a teenager and at that point I hadn't realised that we were still executing people. Um, he was a young man, he was 22 years old. I mean, there were some issues about his potential innocence, but it wasn't really what bothered me the most is the fact that he was a 22-year-old man. And we just cut him in half, you know, and it just got me going to fight for the abolition in France at the time. So it was like five years before the abolition. Um, that's what got me started. Got me angry, got me started, and I didn't think it would last that long, but here we are. <laughs> you, of course, have a very personal connection to this issue. Talk us through how you met your husband and how you've been defending him. In um, the mid-90s, I met with a French uh, young lawyer who did his thesis on the death penalty in Texas, and I read it, and I just fell off my chair because I never imagined that the legal system in the US was that bad. And he told me about a very unique organization that was set up and run by the death row prisoners in Texas. Um, and he showed me they, did, um, they issued a, a newsletter every three months. And then he said, well, why don't you translate it? And then we can circulate it in French which I did a couple of times. And then he said, you know, if you want to correspond with people on death row, I have three pe persons I'm pretty sure you'll get along with. And Hank was one of those three. What is the, the current situation of his case? Where are we at now? 20, almost 27 years, yeah. Well, we've uh, had a long battle over 10 years just to get access to DNA testing, post-conviction DNA testing. Um, which we finally got in 2012 after he survived three execution dates, one very close one, a uh, last minute stay. Um, we had a couple of hearings, 2015, 2017, and the case has been sitting with the Court of Criminal Appeals in Austin for three and a half years, so we wait, we continue to wait. Now, you've also for a long time been sounding the alarm bell about the fact that capital punishment can have huge implications for the loved ones of the convicted person and for their legal team. Yes. I think the collateral damages are rarely even thought of or considered, uh, but they are very important. I mean, for families, some family members have lost their jobs because they have a son or a husband uh, on death row. They have lost their friends. They are you know, treated pretty much like criminals. And it's the case when we visit at the prison, we are treated like criminals. So it's difficult. We don't often think of lawyers. Uh, I mean, in Texas, lawyers lose clients, unfortunately, very often. It's, um, it's a deep trauma. They don't often talk about it. They have no um, psychological help. Uh, it, they're starting to speak a little bit about it. But yeah, the collateral damages are also the guards who have known the man for years, sometimes decades, and they walk them to their death. It's very traumatizing for them. Some of them leave the prison system because they just can't handle it. You are also often seen in classrooms and assembly halls of schools. Why is it so important for you to raise awareness amongst young people about this issue? Uh, it's important for different reasons. First of all, um, this uh, teaching abolition program that we implement with uh, Together Against the Death Penalty we implement it in France, but not only, in Tunisia, in Morocco, in Lebanon. I think in France it's all the more important because the kids were lucky enough to be born in an abolitionist country. They will be soon eligible to vote. Uh, the future world belongs to them. They have to define what they want it to be like. And the right to life is the first human right, and countries who do not respect that right do not respect the others either. It is, of course, 40 years since capital punishment was abolished here in France. And we can listen now to just a snapshot of the public reaction from way back in 1981. I would support death penalty if I was directly concerned. Otherwise, I maybe wouldn't, it's true. I do think there should be a debate about death penalty. I don't agree on how the death sentence is decided for the so-called particularly horrid crime 
All crimes are horrid. I don't see there would be a death penalty for someone who kills a police agent and not for someone who kills a grandmother to steal her bag. I think murderers aren't sentenced enough, whoever they are. Yes, because if they get 25 years in jail, they're released after 15 years. What does it mean to be imprisoned? What does it really mean? Is it to punish them? Or is it to help them change? Last year, though, the Jean Jaurès Foundation found that 55% of French people are in favour of uh, the death penalty. How do you explain that rise in those numbers? Well, you know, it took 20 years after abolition to that to drop below 50%. So we were never very, very much on the lower level. I think the, uh, the terrorist attacks in France have had a, a great impact on people's mind, the concern, they're worried. Um, there's no easy answer to how to deal with terrorism or terrorists, especially when they are kamikaze and you have nobody to put on trial, which for victims and victims' families is a very difficult thing to reconstruct themselves. So I think whenever there are heinous crimes, even when we had the death penalty, there were times it was very peaceful and the support dropped substantially. And as soon as we had crimes against children, specifically, it just went through the roof and people were screaming, calling for death. So I think it was always fluctuate. That's why it's a question that should never be put to a referendum because we talk with passion for my emotions and justice is, not there, is there to depassionate the debate. Just one final question. Where will your fight against the death penalty take you next? Hopefully it will take me back to Texas to see my husband because we haven't visited since 2019 because of COVID. And it will continue, it will keep me at the steering committee of the World Coalition. We are now dealing with the core of the hard countries, whether Middle East or Asia. is going to be very difficult to abolish, but we are not giving up, we'll get there. It's, uh, question of patience, of lobbying, of uh, being able to observe how society evolves in those countries. But I am absolutely sure we will reach universal abolition. Sandrine Ajor Skinner, thank you so much for talking to France 24. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for another edition of France in Focus. But do stay with us here on France 24. More world news coming up.